Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Another chopped up 50s Les Paul is the topic of today. I can just never get enough of these because people had their own idea of what they wanted a Les Paul to be, and then they later on made those dreams a reality. And while you don't find bursts getting chopped up too often, or even gold tops all that often, it's always the juniors and specials. So let's take a look at this one. All right, headstock has got an interestingly weird border. Fretboard's looking okay, got an interesting wood grain line, and then, oh, 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 that body. We've got a lot to talk about on this one. So obviously this started life as a Les Paul special. Would have looked like this, probably would have been some sort of a TV yellow finish. It'd have a single cutaway, wrap tail piece with the P90 pickups, all this good stuff going on. So we go from this to this somehow. So, at the bare minimum, we have a complete refinish in a cherry color. The wrap tail bridge is non original. In fact, that's not even supposed to be a wrap tail, that's just a regular one. But we have a vintage vibrola arm on here. That actually is vintage. It looks like our pickguard has been modified since and probably is just a complete replacement. But the knobs are looking about original. And we still have P90 pickups in here, which is surprising because normally when somebody goes whoopity woo on both sides over here, they're gonna change other stuff. But not only have they done this double cutaway here, they've actually contoured the edge here really deeply into the guitar even and it appears to continue around the entire edge of it the seller was nice enough to give us side profile shots and you kind of get epiphone scroll vibes or something like that but we've got some sort of a plug of wood in there so maybe they weakened the neck joint how to put that in looking around the other edge doesn't look like they had any more of those issues but here you can really see the depth of that carve and then they just let a flat edge be i'm curious if it's also on the back or not it looks like it might be but now looking at the headstock, what's interesting is they've definitely sculpted the edge of this to expose the bare holly veneer. You know, holly as in Hollywood, that's how the historic ones are done. So apparently specials got that or that was added later on. But you've got your Gibson Mother of Pearl logo and I don't know, it's kind of like a natural binding. I like it. But brace yourself, guys, because what you're about to see is going to blow your mind. I guarantee you, you have never seen this done on a guitar before. One, two. There's two pickups here. There's your regular controls, but your toggle switch is no longer existing. Did they just wire it up as volumes for each and that's just how you blend them? You turn your bridge off to get only your neck pickup or turn your neck off for only your bridge or you have a combination of them, you know, kind of like Mickey Baker style here. No, <laughs> you put it on the side. I, I love this. It's not very practical. I'm sure it works. But if you're a guy that's sitting and playing this, you're going to accidentally knock that all the time. But I've never seen anybody go as crazy as doing that. They just decided, hey, let's widen out this route right here. Put an extended cover over it and that's just going to be my solution here. That way they don't have to put it like right here so it's in the way. They don't have to route the body out right here, even though that'd probably make a little bit more sense or put a mini toggle version of it down here. Nope, we're just going to put it on the side of the guitar. But here, yes, we can see we do have an additional carving on the edge on the back. But speaking of the back, it doesn't look like we have any serial number. Somebody had Schaller tuners on this at one point in time, but now it's back to more vintage style Clusens. But now as far as our pickups, it looks like they're labeled neck facing up. I'm not sure if that really truly matters, does it? Then here's what the backside looks like. And they show you the bobbins of the pickups. Here we can see the neck tenon, which is kind of strange. I, I don't see the long neck tenon in that. Oh, okay, that's a little bit weird. You almost see some screws right here though. <laughs> what, what did they do to this guitar? Let's look into the back control cavity. I think you can see some of the original TV yellow finish back here. So that's boding well for this. Uh, electronics have definitely definitely been played with a little bit but oh yeah you can see it right there that is unnatural it's like something sticking out of a guy's neck they just have a long toggle switch sticking there very amateurly chiseled out as well gotta love it and then we have a photo of a wooden bridge okay so that's pretty interesting it's really out there it's been modified. The seller is claiming it's a 1956 Gibson Les Paul special that he received in 1970. The body has been made to look like an SG body style. Everything works. I believe this to be a prototype. The appointments of the body are perfect. I don't know how anyone could reshape this guitar without pulling the neck. To make the horn so even, it has a contour back. Ah, oh, man. This is a, the, the story of a guy who's owned it for such a long time that he believes he knows the history before he had gotten it. I don't like to talk bad on people, but it's very clearly this is not some sort of a prototype. 
Because believe it or not, you can just reshape a guitar's body by chopping this area off and carving the edges without having to take the neck off of the instrument. But hey, if you don't believe me, he actually had George Groons type up this whole thing for an appraisal where they say the serial number has been lost due to the refinishing. But it looks like we got the original pots that date to the year 1956. So that's how he got his year. But Groon is saying the body has been extensively modified. And OK, yeah, that's where I've seen it before. They called it the Gibson Maestro Vibrato tailpiece. I remember seeing that in like the mid 60s on some guitars. But anyways, I don't see how a guy gets this from George Groon and then goes on to say, I don't know how anybody could have done that. <laughs> so not making fun of the seller, but come on, just advertise it for what it is. It's a fun guitar that's been chopped up and will certainly only appeal to very certain people. And maybe there's some value in the vintage parts. So how much is he asking for this? $15,000, which let's go to Reverb and see what it would take to buy one today. There's one for 24,000. There's one for 16 and a half. There's one for 12. There's one at 15. The 15 one definitely has some issues, had a Bigsby on it, it's had some replaced parts. Maybe that's a decent one to base our modified one on. But how about this one in the UK? It's only 12,000. And besides some replaced Grover tuners on this one, it's looking okay. I mean, we've got some sort of finished damage down here, but finished damage is different than, you know, complete refinishing. But this one has some refinishing work. So comparing apples to apples, that could be another good one. However, this jogs my memory. Why does the other one not have screw holes there? Okay, it does. I was too blinded by the open hold Schaller ones that I, I didn't see these. Okay, so yeah, that calms my worries there. But here we go. An excellent condition appears to be all original on first glance here. 16,000 is what it's going to take to buy one on the market today. However, also keep in mind, it's been for sale for 10 months with very little interest. So this is very high. I'm sure if you offer these guys 15,000, they'd probably consider it. So this one at 15, I'm sorry. I mean, it just makes no sense. Whenever you refinish a vintage guitar, you're going to lose about 30% of its value, sometimes a little bit more. Whenever you do super cutaways, it's going to devalue it even further. And generally, you can't get any further past 60% discount unless you've done something completely terrible, like shave off your headstock, make it a headless <laughs> or something. So even if we gave him the benefit of the doubt, said these things are worth 16500 and let him have 60%, that's 10 grand. And I still don't think it's even worth that much. Conveniently, he's hiding what George Groon said it's worth. But I would hazard a guess somewhere in that three and a half to $5,000 range, somebody just maybe would be interested in this. I mean, you can look at my double cut. I did a very similar evaluation and I took 50% off of it and I haven't found a buyer for it in a year. So maybe these old double cutaway conversions aren't quite as desirable, but they are a great way to get into a vintage piece. If you don't want to spend big, big, big money and you don't mind spending large money still, on modified guitars. But yes, around that $3,500 range, I think you could have a lot of fun with something like that. But my friends, our fun does not end here today. Check out this Gibson S1, reportedly from 1980. Normally, they look like this. This one looks like this. All right, we, we got another double cutaway that's not really serving any purpose over here. And then they've really rounded out our cutaway by chopping a little bit off right there. This one caught my attention due to this giant pearloid pick guard. I mean, it's actually pretty cool, especially now that we have these custom pickups that have the white covers over them. And I say custom because the odds of those being the original pickups with new white covers is next to impossible because those things were epoxy sealed. Unless they painted the original ones. But it looks like the finish has likely been redone as well because that's a full-on gloss finish, which these were not straight from the factory. Still got the harmonica bridge. Looks like they modified our control layout just a little bit. Gave us some fancy switches here. And then we look at the headstock. We get a little bit worried. We see maple fretboard with abalone inlays. Getting a little bit more worried. Looking at the back of the headstock. Granted. The original Gibson ones, you can find scarf joints on those bad boys. It's one of the few times that Gibson has used it, but those are modern Grover tuners even. But then we look at our neck plate. Okay, so my first thought was, this is probably one of those knockoff Marauders or S1s. It's kind of like the lawsuit era Les Pauls. There were companies who made these, but that's kind of what this neck reminded me of. But you got to give the seller a fair chance here. It says it has a new repro neck. 
So apparently, yeah, super modern neck. It's got a whole bunch of stuff going on. But at this point, when you replace the neck on a Gibson, which you can't normally say, because most Gibsons are not bolt-on necks. There's just a handful of them. You're at the point where you really can't prove this was ever even a Gibson body. So I feel like advertising this as 1980 Gibson S1 is kind of a gray area of maybe a potentially misleading listing, in my opinion. But everything is spelled out here, so we'll give them the benefit of the doubt there. Maybe someone will want it, but... I mean, you can buy an original one for that price, so I wouldn't personally suggest it unless this neck is absolutely everything you've ever been looking for. But to wrap up tonight's episode, remember the Heinrichsen collection that we had talked about a couple of weeks ago of carved guitars that are ridiculously expensive? Check these out. A man in Indonesia is carving these up and honestly selling them for dirt cheap. So we got some sort of a Les Paul body here, and when I first saw this, I thought, oh cool, it's like an orangutan guy, he's eating some grapes. But then when laying everything out for this episode, I started to actually take a closer look and it's like, no, it's got like a, like a big belly and then it's got like the body of an elephant and some sort of a cloth and then we've got two human feet, maybe another arm back. What, what, what exactly is this? And thankfully the seller had me covered. Next photo shows us this, which is apparently an iconic ancient Javanese shadow puppet, Samar. Which, yes, Javanese is correct. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but that is not a typo for Japanese. I'll be honest, I've never heard of this before in my life. But it is a thing, and it's kind of an interesting art style. If you're into kind of scary stuff. <laughs> Sorry, children that watch my show. Kind of reminds me of the Kishin doll, Les Paul. Except for, I kind of like that one better, due to slight video game references that you could also pull out of it. But yeah, if you can have that carved on this guitar, maybe they do custom orders. Are they really allowed to put that on a Les Paul body shape? Probably not. But I thought it was interesting for that kind of money. And that was one, but then we've got another one over here. A lot more money, 400 bucks shipped to your door from Indonesia versus $45,000 for the teacup Les Paul, which both are cool. But look at how intricate this one is. It's got a lot of elephants in it and it's a little bit more, you know, universally well-known artwork, I would say, unless they've got other things hidden in here. I really like the uh, knob placement. It kind of just looks like a giant eye, so you'd have to put an eyeball knob on it or something, then it'd be really funny, but I think that's like directly in the center of this elephant's face. But you've got a whole bunch of stuff going on here. I appreciate the artwork, but that's definitely for somebody that has to know how to glue a neck in, probably do a little bit of finishing, touches to guitars, let alone the actual finish. But they've called this one Alam, which means Mother Nature. And oh cool, they actually have a finished guitar. Wow, only 500 bucks. You can get a hand carved mahogany body kimbang. I hate talking about this because I'm not sure if you actually ordered this if it would actually arrive. So be very careful if this video makes you go, woohoo! I, I have no idea about the seller. He's only got like one photo of all this stuff, so it could just be completely fake. Because let me tell you, shipping from Indonesia to the United States is going to cost you that much, not be that cheap. But if anything else, we can appreciate this for its artwork. Looks like just a whole flower motif going on here. Maybe with a little bit of additional paint, this could come to life, but just in the all wooden color. It doesn't do much for me, but then again, it's a Floyd Rose-like system. You got EMG pickups. It wouldn't normally speak to me anyway. All right, troglodytes, I hope that's enough macabre for you guys tonight. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.